Welcome back everyone. Uh, what I want to do in this example is actually show how we can use the disk method to prove a standard volume formula from geometry. We're actually going to compute the volume of a cone. Um, you might remember from your previous high school or college geometry class, I mean, I guess maybe if you're really on top of things, you saw this in middle school, or who knows, maybe middle or elementary school one day, right? Who knows, whatever. Uh, anyways, how, how do we get all these volume formulas? Like a, the volume of a sphere is four-thirds, what is it? Four-thirds pi r cubed. Um, I hope I said that one right. The volume of a cone, uh, we're going to see in a moment, is one-third pi r squared times h. And, you know, you can talk about pyramids. And where do all these volume formulas come from? It turns out we're going to actually talk about some of these uh, in our discussion of volume. For right now, I just want to talk about the volume of a cone. So if we think of a cone... Uh, think about like the type of ice cream cone you've eaten before, right? We're looking at the volume of something that looks like this, right? And so the parameters of the cone that we're going to be considering are the two following. The radius of the cone um, is significant because the wider the base, the more volume you have. The shorter the base, the less volume you have. Also, the height of the cone, uh, this right here, is going to be of significance. We're going to call the height H and the radius R. So we can actually realize that the, a cone is a solid of revolution. Um, if we take this right triangle we now see highlighted in red, and you spin that around uh, the axis of the cone, that, that the rotation of that triangle forms the cone. So cones are just solids of revolutions formed by rotating right triangles. And so you can see the following uh, to the left right here. Um, let's, let's treat this as a solid of revolution type problem. Um, if we think of a typical cross-section of this triangle, you see here this, this rectangle right here. Um, let's orient it so that the axis of the cone actually coincides with the x-axis. And then the cross-sectional rectangles are going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. And we're going to spin those around the x-axis, forming our disk right here. Then the height of our rectangle here is, if this point at the top of the rectangle is x, comma y, the height of the rectangle... I should say the, the radius of the cylinder um, is going to be this y coordinate. And so we're looking at the volume of our cone will be the integral of pi y squared dx. dx is the thickness of the, of the disk, y is the radius of the disk. Now, where, how, how is the x coordinate allowed to change? Well, if we look at the extremes right here, one extreme is you get 0, 0 right here. x could equal 0, so x equals 0 right there. Uh, on the other extreme, where can we do? Because the, the rectangle can live anywhere in this region right here. Uh, whoops. And so the rectangles can go anywhere in this region. The other side would be over here. When x is actually the height of the, of the cone and the y coordinate would still be 0. So x is going to range from 0 to h. Now we have to deal with this y coordinate, right? Because this y value... Uh, that would be great if we're integrating with respect to y, but the thickness of the rectangle is dx, so we have to integrate with respect to x. How do you write this, this uh, y coordinate in terms of the x coordinates, right? Well, the idea is to use the slope of the line to help you out here. Because uh, if we focus on this line right here, um, it is just a line. We can find the line by slope intercept form. Uh, so we get this y equals mx plus b. We've positioned it so that the apex of the cone goes to the origin. So that's going to tell us that the y coordinate is just zero. So our line's going to look like y equals mx. We need to find the slope of this line. And we can find slope of a line using the standard slope formula, m equals rise over 1, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, but we have to know two points on the line. One point, we can use the origin. But the other point we want to use is right here. And this is going to be a point which is h is its x coordinate, its y coordinate is going to be r. So basically, we're going to just run a similar triangle type argument here. Um, so you're going to end up with r minus 0 over h minus 0. So your slope is r over h. And so you didn't see captured uh, in our diagram the label right here, y equals r over h x. And so we're going to plug that in for the y coordinate, y equals r over h x. So if we put that in there, I'm going to factor the pi out of the integral because it's just a constant, 0 to h. We're going to end up with an r squared over h squared 
times x squared dx. Um, I'm also going to take the r squared h squared out because, again, this is just a constant. So we can take it out, and so we end up with the expression pi r squared over h squared integral from 0 to h of x squared dx. And so now as we integrate this by the power rule, I'm just going to copy the pi r squared over h squared again. When you take the, using the power rule here, x squared is going to become an x cubed over 3, go from 0 to h. Um, you're going to plug in the h and get an h cubed. When you plug in 0, you'll just get 0. And so we end up with a pi r squared h cubed um, all over, uh, let's see, 3 h squared right there. And so now the thing to consider is, well, simplifying the h's, there's h squared on bottom, that cancels with two of the h's on the top, and that'll then leave us with a pi r squared h, and then there's, this, there's just a three that's left in the numerator, uh, excuse me, the denominator there. And so if I were to just tweak this a little bit, we get one third pi r squared h cubed, the usual, the usual air, uh, volume formula for a cone. And so this can be derived using this disk method or for more general solids, you might wanna use the washer method. And so this, this technique of calculating volumes can be extremely useful to not just establishing the standard volume formulas of solids we've seen in previous geometry courses, but also for many irregular uh, solids as well. And so in the next video, we're actually going to, in the next lecture, I should say, which is another video, of course, we're going to be looking at some generalizations of this washer and disk method we've seen here in lecture four. Uh, so take a look for those videos to learn some more about these, uh, how we can use integration to find volumes of three-dimensional solids here. Um, if you do like the videos you're watching, feel free to like the video, post a comment. Um, if you have any questions, for example, also comment below. I'd be happy to answer those. Um, for you as, as, if you didn't understand anything or just want some more clarification on the videos right here. Subscribe to see some more videos like this in the future, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.